Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things you can expect uh, that is happening here and around the city of Missoula. Um, it is getting colder out there. I got a whole bunch of guests. I got some artists here talking about their upcoming event. I also got Missoula Agent Service talking about giving trees. Um, I got some weather. I got uh, new dub and stuff. Uh, I got events, and I got all sorts of wonderful things uh, from the city of Missoula, including an old World War, World War II veteran who gave an old uh, uh, J Japanese honorary flag back to a Japanese family. So uh, we'll talk about that and more, but let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 35 degrees outside. Uh, your high is expected to be 39 degrees. Your low will be 24, and then you pretty much keep consistently. But of course, you can see by Thursday, Friday, you're going to see some precipitation, some rain and snow mixtures happening throughout that whole weekend long, as long uh, along with that as well. So you can expect uh, pretty much uh, pretty stagnant, cold temperatures throughout this whole week. But it's not going to be too bad. Um, let's talk about some news items um, at the University of Montana. Bobby Halk, former Grizz football coach, may be coming back to the University of Montana. And while during his tenure, he had more than 80, uh, 80 to 17 win-loss record. But uh, from a Missoulian article that has been following this story, it seems like though Halk has been proven more problematic than what the record he could bring to Grizz football. Young uh, football players were charged with crimes ranging from throwing beer bottles at people to felony assault uh, while Hulk, uh, Hulk was there. Um, uh, Bobby Hulk was nicknamed the bum by one national sports writer for stonewalling student journalists who asked him about assault allegations against two players. After his departure from UM Bobby's replacement, an athletics de department went into a nosedive in reputation when players were accused of sexual assault crimes. The final uh, decision on Hulk's possible return will come from the Commissioner of Higher Education, um, Clayton Christian. In state news, an attorney for the uh, reporter who was assaulted by Greg Jean Forte, uh, who is now uh, the representative of the uh, state of Montana on the eve of his election last May has sent a cease and desist letter to congressman and his spokesperson asking them to sol stop falsely saying that the reporter insinuated the physical attack. Gene Forte admitted in court in June to assaulting Ben Jacobs, a reporter for The Guardian, when Jacobs tried to ask Gene Forte his views on health care before Congress. When pleading guilty to the misdemeanor assault in Gallatin County District Court, Gene Forte said Jacobs did not insinuate any physical contact with me. He also wrote a letter to Jacob saying that the reporter did not start the physical altercation. Press release sent out by June Forte's campaign in the hours after the assault falsely blamed the attack on Jacob, saying that the reporter grabbed the candidate's wrists. In national news, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren says President Donald Trump's reference references to uh, the nickname for her, Pocahontas, at the evening of an honorary Navajo Veterans Monday was j a distraction from other issues. Um, Trump told uh, the men who were being honored uh, uh, during World War II speech uh, helped uh, basically transmit cr uh, critical secret messages that helped the U.S. and Allied uh, powers win the war during uh, World War II. Uh, but the Trump continued with the reference to Senator Elizabeth Warren uh, from Massachusetts, although, in his quotes, he said, although we have a representative of Congress who says she was, says, uh, was here a long time ago, they call her Pocahontas. This was only the tip of the iceberg as Trump has uh, called Warren Pocahontas 12 times since 2012 when she was elected, when she ran uh, for her Senate seat. Uh, what started out as an evening to honor World War II veterans ended up uh, as a publicity stunt that doesn't paint anyone in the U.S. in a good light. So that's kind of what's it and happening in and around the United States and all that stuff. Uh, there's another article on the Missoulian as well of a veteran who uh, just uh, died over a year and a half ago but was finally honored in the Hamilton uh, Ceremony and Veteran Services. Uh, he was 70 years old, and you should check it out. It's uh, it's it's kind of sad, uh, but it's definitely one of those. It's a nice little ending to a story that I suggest you guys read as well. Um Let's talk about, uh, I have some guests on, so I'm not going to keep them waiting any longer. So when I come back, I'll have some artists talking about their um, art installation coming up this weekend.
Hi guys, we are here with uh, Lynn Sanders and we have uh, Jolene uh, Brink and you guys are here to talk about Water Maps. Water Maps is a art installation that's happening this Friday, first Friday here in December. Uh, this is the last uh, show I'm doing in November, uh, but this Friday is December 1st and it's first Friday and uh, the weather is looking like, you know, wintery weather, but it's a good way to be indoors and look at some art. So. Let's talk about your art installation. You guys are collaborating, right? We are. Yep. Yeah, we decided to do this collaboration in February um, when I had a collaboration with another artist and Jolene looked at the art and said, let's collaborate. <laughs> and I had an exhibit last summer that I was excited to experiment with and I really thought that my ideas would play really well with what Linz was doing and so we set out to think about the things that we had in common and I really like maps and Linz told me that she really likes painting whales <laughs> and so we said all right let's figure out uh, how to put those two together. Cool. So I, I did notice when I was kind of reading, just brushing up on a, before the interview, that you guys use uh, old recycled maps as mm -hmm. a uh, canvas mm -hmm. for your art. Yep, recycled maps um, as well as historic documents. And um, my grandfather was an engineer, so I also have his notebooks. And um, so some of his writing is in the show of his calculations and um, and his, his kind of blueprint drawings. Cool. And, and, yep. oh. oh, and, and, and with that, um, I also use a lot of encaustic wax, so playing with what happens when you take oh. those old documents and you put hot wax on top and all of a sudden the text, you can see it on both sides of it. And so we've talked a lot about, in our co collaboration, about different layers and what that means to put into the work and to the concept of the collaboration. And uh, where is this event happening? The E3 Convergence Gallery. Wow. And uh, uh, on, on, on caustics? Uh, in caustics. And caustics. Uh, man, because um, I remember that the Zach was doing a little, uh, 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 like a prep, kind of like an uh, introductory class to it as well. And I was like, I was looking at it, I was like, how do you pronounce this word? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange. And, and some of the encaustics I was working with was um, from my friend, and he... Um, works with bees and so it's his like bees wax. Wow. Yeah. Um, and Jolene's working with some really rich colors in the encaustics. You can really get some some neat colors and layers with them. Cool. But this isn't the only thing that's going to be at this installation as well because this is going to be like a big multimedia um, mixed art kind of uh, event. So what kind of uh, types of art are going to or can people expect? Um, well, um, along with aquatic animals painted onto Montana maps, um, I've also created ceramic coral reefs. So um, you can kind of enjoy visiting the ocean floor um, with some ceramics. And I really love to play with putting different things on transparencies and putting that against the wall. So we'll have a really, really big piece where um, I took old U.S. Geologic Service maps from Montana, printed them on the old-fashioned transparency like people used to have in schools, and um, if you can imagine, you would like put it on the projector and it would right. be on the wall. Um, and you take that and you put the ink down on the contact paper and pull it back, and so it's a just a different way of printmaking. And so we'll have a large piece like that to go alongside um, Linz's clay and, and paintings. That's really cool, yeah. and um, I'm. Uh, this sounds really exciting. It's like a whole array, a prethra of visuals <laughs> that people can enjoy at E3, and it's going to be happening first Friday from uh, five to eight p.m. But five if you to miss nine. five to nine, yeah, we'll see. You know, the late. extra hour at E3 Convergence Gallery, <laughs> um, but also it's it's the beginning of the art installation, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be there from then until pretty much the whole month of December? Yep. 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 December thirtieth. So if you miss the first Friday, you have plenty of chances to check out E3, which is usually open. Like everywhere else that's open in downtown Missoula, which is after 11, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so is there anything else you guys want to say? Where can people find more information about your art and you guys'? Um... Yeah, um, you can find it on Convergence Gallery, um, their website, and also on Facebook mm -hmm. under Water Maps. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining Thank me. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, I will, I will see you guys Friday um, for one thing or another because uh, we also have our flagship as well. Yep, yep. that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just get this thing all squared up. All right.
Hi guys, we're back here with Kim Hutchinson, and you are here to talk about Giving Trees, and you're from the Missoula um, Aging Services. Yeah, so Giving Trees are an annual fundraiser for Missoula Aging Services, and as you know, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. Um, so it's something we do every year around the holidays, and it's just a little fundraiser that we do throughout you know, a whole year's worth of fundraisers, but it makes an impact and it's a really good way for the community to get involved with um, some of the things that we do. Excellent. And um, let's see, uh, last year you said you had oh, like over 2,000. Yeah. And this year you hope to, what, what is your goal this year? Oh, a goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a good goal would be 500 above that. Um, okay. I think that would be reasonable, but we have uh, 10 locations this year, um, which is three more than last year. So hopefully being spread out a little bit more uh, reaches more people. Uh, we have the county. The county's been amazing, Missoula County. They've partnered with us for five locations. So it's the administration building, the CAPS office, community and planning services, um, animal control, the courthouse rotunda <laughs> and the library so um, they've been amazing partners and uh, all of these trees are set up and they have um, tags on them like this oh. um, and so on the back are instructions and you get to eat a candy cane <laughs> um, but they they are tags for a variety of our programs so um, like this one is 20 Twenty dollars will provide four hours of respite care. Uh -huh. um, so especially around the holidays, caregivers yeah. are swamped um, with family visiting, and so uh, it's good to think of giving them a break. And then uh, forty-two dollars provides six meals on wheels dinners. Each each of them costs seven dollars actually. So um, and then all the way up to a hundred dollars would do um, forty hours of mentoring. Um, our yeah, I really like how the Giving Trees is kind of like all-encompassing. It's a nice way just to kind of give Yeah. Uh, through, uh, basically, it's, a, it's just a nice way because uh, Missoula Aging Services is a great organization that really helps the aging population that is Missoula. Yeah. And Missoula has uh, one of the higher aging uh, populations around. Yeah. Well, we have Missoula, you know, in Montana, Missoula has a larger population in general, but per capita, we do have um, a very large older population. and it's growing and it's growing everywhere. So um, this actually applies nationwide. So um, yeah, it's, we feel like giving trees are a really good way. You know, we get a lot of donations from visitors in town who will be shopping at the hub, which is another one of our locations, the MSO hub. And they'll be shopping and then they'll send in a do donation. And um, we get a lot of those from visitors. Um, it's also a really good way to, uh, instill philanthropy in kids at a young age. You can kind of walk them through it and you know, tell them exactly what they'll be providing and um, help them with the donation probably nice. <laughs> because they're kids. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a really good fundraiser and we love doing it every year. And uh, let, let's talk about some of the venues. What are some of the venues that are gonna be hosting the Giving Trees this year? So the five county ones, like I mentioned, uh, the MSO Hub, uh, Missoula Aging Services, we actually have one. Um, we actually, we figured that out after the first year. Someone was like, well, why don't you have a giving tree here? And we're like, yeah, we should have a giving tree here. Um, Taco Sano, so it's the south side location, not the one that's um, close the to the strip. Yeah. Um, and then the food farm, that's the new one for this year that we're really excited about. So in the meat department, mm -hmm. you'll see our giving tree as you're doing your your holiday dinner shopping, so. And I think that's it, did I get them all? Oh, Subaru of Missoula, that's a big oh. one too. Um, because they've been great partners and that's part of their Share the Love event. Um, which for every new Subaru leased or sold between now and January 2nd, um, the buyer can designate $250 of that to go to Meals on Wheels. Yep. So we have a giving tree there as part of that event. No, and I think that Missoula Asian Services is a good organization that really helps definitely promote the independence and dignity of our uh, aging population, but along the way, but also helps the people who want to help those people as well. Right, exactly. Yeah, the caregivers, that's such a crucial component because if you 
or helping the older adults and not the caregivers, then you're kind of missing the other half yep. to the older adult's health. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, for some of those of you, of you out there who don't know, Kim is usually my uh, go-to person when it comes to uh, formulating all the interviews from the Missoula Agent Services. Yeah. So I just definitely want to extend a thank you for yeah. providing me such colorful guests to come through here <laughs> yeah. and just talk about all their wonderful things that are happening in the community, yeah. what they do for the community, um, just a whole bunch of just different um, classes and different things that provide seniors a chance to live independently, mm -hmm. but also have help when they want it. Right, exactly. Because that's, that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of like, I think that's kind of like the perfect thing about Missouri Agent Services. It's like, they're there if you want. Right. Yeah. And the other thing is that we we aren't just providing services for older adults. We are asking them to donate their skills. Um, it's not just a, a one-way street. We have a lot of really skilled older adults who donate their time volunteering. And so oh, yeah. It's great to be able to use you know their background and their history and all of their lifetime of skills to give back to their community. Yeah, so. you got uh, Meals on Wheels, which a lot of people who do deliver meals are retired uh, well, folks mm -hmm. that just go out in the community and deliver foods and just talk to yeah. people. And um, even like Senior Companion is another one of those great organizations as well that just has a senior with uh, just to hang out, just yeah. to give um, some company as well. Because yeah. a lot of ways it's like for a chance for them to give, but also um, they also have the opportunity to, to receive right. these kind of programs as well. Yeah. But the Giving Tree, back to the Giving Tree, is basically kind of all encompassing of, of how people in the community can keep organizations like this going. Right, exactly. And um, to learn more about what we do and um, sort of all of the programs that we provide, our website's a great resource that has everything on there, I think. <laughs> yep, MissoulaAgingServices.org. Um, they you'll at this point especially, they'll, you'll probably have a tab that directs people to the Giving Trees. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have it on our calendar too. All the locations are listed there. We update our Facebook page pretty regularly, and Twitter, and a little bit on Instagram. So um, yeah, you can keep in touch with us there. Um, or if you just want to pick up the phone and call us, 728-7682 is our number, and um, you can talk to probably me about Giving Trees. <laughs> Well, thanks, Kim. Yeah. You know, I think you just kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, I always appreciate uh, you bringing me guests all the time. Yeah. So um, I hope you have uh, a good luck on Giving Trees. Yeah. Um, you guys, more information, um, you can give them a call. What That number again is? 728-7682. All right. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to say before we go? No, I think that was it. Thanks right. for having me. Yeah. The question everyone seems to avoid is how much of the landscape should we try to control, including fire, versus how much should we allow natural processes to continue? Anybody like that one? Off, and I'll bet Phil's got something to add. Uh, one of the things that we keep neglecting to uh, to uh, to believe in is that, in fact. A uh, hundred and some years of fire exclusion has been active management. We have actively, deliberately made choices to exclude fire from landscapes every summer, every year, for over a hundred years. So if there is now pushback to actively do something to change that, let's let's not be in denial that we've, we, we are trying to mitigate some of our deliberate choices from before so that we predispose these lands kept fire away from them and so let's realize that as now we talk about making the forest work to, again for us well that means that we have to also do work in the forest so the active management side of of fuel treatment and mitigation is something that we have a hundred years of actions to account for before we even catch up with those other decisions i remember moving to dallas and being in oak cliff texas pretty bad part of town where stevie ray Vaughan grew up and i hear some machine guns <laughs> And my cousins were standing there looking at me, like waiting for me to react. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, holy sh we're in Dallas, Texas, in Oak Cliff, and I'm hearing submachine guns. This is not Fort Hill, because I'm used to that. It's acculturated into my head, the machine guns, that notion of that. And then you think about thousands of Native people who served in the military that were stationed at Fort Sill from the people who 
were the code talkers and their relationship to language and how that's defined to the relationship of the different kinds of songs that are war dance songs or songs that relate to that experience of tribal people and warriorship. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This just happened like a week ago, so I'm still, my mind's blown that this idea of that, that the sound and how its relationship to developing culture and identity and how militarism, war, all of it, the sounds of, of the space of Fort Sill and the Wichita Mountains have defined generations of people. And that was Pianissimo, which will be presented on MCAT or, and has already been on MCAT a couple times. That's uh, part a uh, million out of many other programs that have been airing on MCAT as well. Um, those programs and more are easy, easily accessible by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything MCAT, everything Missoula, a media, community, Resource and let's reorder that. It's Missoula's community media resource. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a great way to uh, get involved and uh, look up um, wonderful programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Pianissimo X. That's the one I just showed you. You got ASF Cafe. How do we live with fires? Uh, China, North Korea, and the U.S. What happens next? All sorts of these programs that are going to be pretty much airing all week long. Um, these are the newest ones that will be airing on MCAT, and you guys can access that anytime by logging on to MCAT.org and clicking on any of those channel links to those um, resources. Um, once again, I want to show you our MCAT page because we are hosting Winter Days, which is a uh, kind of like a winter camp for kids. And this is for uh, a 9 to 3 p.m., 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I uh, At this time, I won't be hosting the morning show because I'll be uh, hosting some kids pretty much all day where we get to make some cool, fun videos ranging from stop animation, live action. Basically, it gives the kids experience just to do it, and it's all for the low, low price of $99. Um, so yeah, we, well the space is limited. Uh, we have we're we're capping it off at 15 kids just to give everyone a chance to uh, get on a computer, be able to learn how to edit. Um, we have plenty of uh, equipment here, and if you are looking to uh, actually get involved with MCAT, tonight is our ori orientation. Every Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m. at 500 North Higgins Suite 105, MCAT hosts an orientation for anyone to come down, check out equipment ranging from camera, lights, audio gear, all sorts of wonderful things that anybody can come on down to share in this community media resource. So that's it. All in a nutshell, here's some um, vain um, talking right now. Here's my website. Check it out. It's pretty awesome. WakeUpMissoula.Wixsite.com slash WakeUpMissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. You go to Wake Up Missoula. You can see the most current episode on the front page. You click on videos to see more uh, from past interviews and more from what you've seen today. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much all you guys need to know about my morning show. Uh, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, uh, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. So without further ado, it is time for your city council report. And... Today's City Council Report is brought to you by Missoula's Community Media Resource. I don't know why I said brought to you by. It sounds very uh, hokey, but I just did it. So uh, Missoula's City Council meeting was about 14 minutes and 47 seconds long, but it was a very interesting story. Um, so here is a proclamation for Marvin Strombo. Whereas Marvin Strombo has lived in Montana all of his life, 
and has served God and our great country faithfully. He is lovingly called Daddy and Grandpa by his family, and his great-granddaughter Kaylee calls him Grandpa Grape. And, whereas Marvin Strombo enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps during World War II and during combat came across a Japanese honor flag, and whereas Mr. Strombo hoped that after the war he would be able to reunite the Japanese soldier's family with the honor flag, and though several decades had gone, gone by, Mr. Strombo never gave up his dream of returning this flag. And whereas, with the help and assistant, assistance of his family, friends, the Oban Society, and the people of Japan, it was learned that the, the deceased soldier's name was Sadeo Yasui, and whereas Marvin Strombo has been able to honorably meet Sadeo Yasui's family and friends and return the honor flag to its proper resting place, allowing closure for the family's grief and the return of Sadeo Yus Yus I'm sorry, Yasui's spirit, now therefore I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, do hereby recognize the 17th day of December as Marvin Strombo Day. Mr. Strombo. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Mr. Strombo uh, w made it to the city council meeting on Monday uh, where he was honored for this. Um, he is uh, a, a ripe young old age of 91 years of age. And there you see him getting the uh, honorary of it as well. So um, uh, just a little bit of background and, and information as well. I looked it up online. Um, December 17th will be the day uh, dedicated to this man. The vow was fulfilled on Tuesday, exactly 72 years after Japanese uh, Japan surrender, when Strombo, who was 93, sorry, um, handed the flag to the brother and sister of Sadeo Yasui. Uh, Yasui, the eldest of six children from a farming town in central Japan, followed a common practice of carrying into battle a Japanese flag covered with messages and signatures of family and friends. Strombo said he found the flag on Yasui's body in a 19. 44 battle on the island of Saipan, uh, the site of fierce fighting in the Pacific War. Uh, Strombo said he had intended to return the flag soon after the war, but did not know how. About five years ago, he was put in touch with a nonprofit group that helps U.S. Veteran, US veterans return artifacts to relatives. So, yeah, a, a nice little uh, tidbit from our city council meeting. Um, a nice little short meeting. I suggest you kind of check it out. Uh, there wasn't much going on there, but I think that was a nice thing to highlight for that meeting as well. But I'm going to completely shift gears and talk about our Saturday drop-in animations. Our Saturday drop-in animations are uh, happening um, every single Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. for only $10. We're th th definitely the cheapest kid market in town. A lot of times uh, just by people uh, – providing support because most people uh, support MCAT by uh, subscribing to Charter Communications who is our uh, broadcast handler. Um, just by d basically just doing that we offer these kind of classes. Um, $10 is a very cheap uh, deal for uh, basically four hours. So if you imagine it, you're basically paying a babysitter $2.50 to uh, watch your kid per hour. So just think about it in those terms. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, here is a kind of like a little, a little quick example. Um, just some of the examples of some of the kids' uh, videos as well. Um, you guys can um, you can kind of imagine some of the uh, videos that these kids make. Uh, you got a little Lando right there flying in some spaceship Star Wars. Different things happening, all sorts of different things. Uh, people like Eugene Red, <laughs> Red Play-Doh. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's one of those videos that uh, any kid can make, and they do make. Uh, those are kind of along the lines of the stop animation that you guys get to see. And then by the end of the stop animation year, which is going to be May, um, the kids will get a chance to come home with, go home with a DVD of the compilation of everything that those kids have made that year, including some live action stuff that was done as well. So kids don't only get to do, don't don't only get to do. Oh, wow, they they don't only have the option of doing stop animation, but they also have a chance to do um, some live action stuff as well. Or sometimes I like to uh, have kids help out with some um, of the content that I show on my morning show, um, like this video I'm about to show you. It's called Santa and the Three Bears. This is dubbing stuff. Just gotta get rid of these children. Santa, I want this. Santa, I want that. 
But no, what, uh, what does Santa want? Yeah. Uh, he's complaining. Yo, ho, ho. Gotta be aware. Aware of the bear. Bear gotta be. Bear aware. You're not after a honey, are you? Huh? No. Maybe I am. Well, I think that's just stereotyping, you know, Santa Claus stealing a... <laughs> What's this? Uh, did I already bring stockings? Is there another Christmas we don't know about, Santa? We'll gladly take them off your hands. No, no, I don't think so. It's just that now I'm starting to hear talking bears. It's really weird. Uh, talking bears? Uh, have you seen a bear do this before? Huh. Whoa! 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 Whoa. 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 <laughs> no, children, you shouldn't be messing with old Santa Claus there. He's kind of gone crazy. Oh, I get it. A teddy bear. That's cool. Gotta keep it basic, right? Uh, I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, me too. Uh, ooh, do, 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 do. Um, maybe we should, uh, um, think about, uh, going outside. Uh, good idea. Then we'll eat them. Yeah! Ho, ho. Uh, lo look up there. Look up there. Uh, it's up there. Santa Claus. <laughs> Thanks, Santa. Thanks for all the presents. <laughs> I like presents. Well, this was a fun Christmas. I got my mind on my presents and my presents on my mind. <laughs> Laid back. <laughs> and to think, I didn't think Santa Claus even existed. And he's a pretty good beatboxer. I'll wait till the spring to eat him. Let me break the fourth wall. Do you know where my dignity is? <laughs> what dignity? Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doo. And the three bears proclaimed, God bless two Christmases. God bless it. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to be showing a whole bunch of uh, Christmas dubbing stuff leading up to Christmas. So if you have any suggestions for uh, um, public domain Christmas movies, I'll be uh, gladly, I'll gladly take up take upon that task as well. Um, you know, it's live, and I'm going to do a show on Friday as well. So I'm going to talk about some um, events that are happening. There is a holiday book fair going on as we speak right now until about uh, 10 30 this morning uh, but if you're seeing this afternoon you're too late uh, rattlesnake elementary is doing a book sale at their elementary school library uh, fact and fiction is supporting the book fair which is a great local business to support um, parents uh, social coffee and shop every thursday morning from 8 30 to 9 30 a.m to allow parents to shop kid free um, <laughs> Sorry, it is great. I just love how some of these are, are being worded. But yeah, you can you just be kid free and you can go shopping. It's great. And it's gonna be at uh, Rattlesnake Elementary School Library from um, basically uh, let's see, November twenty eighth, eight to seven p.m. eight a.m. to seven p.m. Sorry about that. Um, November thirtieth, eight a.m. to seven p.m. December first, um, eight a.m. to ten thirty a.m. So this morning it's gonna be really short, but then ex expect those next couple mornings to be. Uh, a little longer, so uh, you can enjoy some of this book fair as well. I think I spent too much time on the book fair. Mismo and uh, Missoula Indoor Sports uh, uh, Arena, and as long, along with a Roots Acro Sports Center, is doing all sorts of indoor sports and tumble starting as early as 9.30 in the morning, going to about noonish. So you can check all that out by going on to their various places. And it's a good way to stay active because it's really hard to uh, be able to uh, go outside and be comfortable enough to uh, run around, uh, especially in this weather. So some of these indoor sports arenas and stuff like that is a great way to do it. Community Coats is going to be at the Southgate Mall from November 24th to December 24th. Help keep, keep Missoula area children and adults warm this winter by donating uh, gently used coats and gloves of all sizes. Drop off coats and gloves at the Community Coats box in front of Eddie's Bowers uh, December 24th 
uh, by December 24th. Sorry about that. Mizzou Textiles will clean up and mend clothes before the Salvation Army distributes them. So if you have uh, lightly uh, damaged clothes or whatever that can be have an easy patch up that you can't do yourself, you can send it to uh, in the fr in, in a uh, box in front of Eddie Bowers, and they'll take care of it for you. So you can still donate some of the things that you think you you can donate, but also Salvation Army Red Kettle Christmas is happening. So throughout the holiday, Salvation Army volunteers will be greeting shoppers in the main entrance at the Southgate Mall pretty much all the time. So you'll be seeing them because they'll be ringing a little bell. So donate to them, and it helps uh, support families in need, especially during the holidays. Holiday performances are going to be at the Southgate Mall happening pretty much all throughout. If you guys haven't gotten a chance to check it out, um, I just want to give a nice little shout out to uh, Asaf Adonai. He's a piano. He's a piano player who's gonna be playing piano pretty much all uh, winter long at the Southgate Mall. If you uh, if you can if you can spot him, say uh, uh, tell um, Scott says hi. Um, but if you are interested in doing your own um, variety of talents uh, to serenade the shoppers, you can go. Uh, you can contact Lauren at shopsouthgate.com. So it's kind of like an open invitation to artists to come on down to showcase their talents there. And they'll probably ask you what kind of uh, music you'll be doing. And if you're just going to be like hardcore rock and hip-hop, they'll be like, yeah, it's serenading. We're looking music to serenade. Yeah, so don't, 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 don't go overboard. Okay, so cultural day. <laughs> I'm spending way too much time on uh, events, so let's go. So Chinese Lanterns, Families First Children's Museum, is they're doing a, a learning about making Chinese lanterns and learning more about the our Asian neighbors. And this is happening from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. this morning as well. Lions Club tree sale is happening at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Gear holiday trees by the Missoula Lions Club at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Um, and they also have a llama barn. But be aware um, that the Lions Club's tree sale have a tendency to sell out pretty quickly. So be aware of that as well. Um, but it starts at noon today and it pretty much will go on until I'm pretty sure They'll sell trees within the after um, by tonight or something. So you gotta get on those trees. United Way's Progress and Pi at Poly Square. Uh, Poly Square is uh, doing a uh, an update on the campaign, uh, all while enjoying delicious pie, courtesy of Bernice's Bakery and a No Host Bar. Plus, more fun details to come. So United Way's is gonna be talking about all their uh, activities and what's going on with them. Um, Poly Square, 5.30 p.m. tonight. Women's Comedy Hour and Workshop is going to be at the Boundlander. Um, they do this uh, once a month, and this is your chance, if you're a woman, to go to the Badlander and do uh, basically work on your comedy chops uh, with a bunch of other funny women as well. And that happens pretty much uh, a lot of uh, last Wednesdays of the month. I think it's every second and la fourth Wednesday of the month. Don't quote me on that. Do not quote me on that. Um, you guys can check it out, and it's it happens at the um, at the uh, Badlander. It starts at 6 p.m. and then they have stand up at 7:30 until about 9 p.m. that night as well. Um, there's Peter and the Star Catcher is going to be at the University of Montana. It's going to be a theater performance. So if you guys are interested in doing some theater stuff, it is a um, a story about Peter Pan, and it's about a boy who never grew up came to embrace his legacy as Peter Pan and how. An irresponsible young woman named Molly helped him along the way. Audience of all ages can be thrilled by this charming story's inventive staging and fun-packed language. Oh, it's pun-packed. I thought I thought they misspelled fun, but it's pun-packed language. And the show runs from um, the 21st of November all the way until uh, December 3rd. So this will be your last. Uh, this Friday looks. Uh, this Sunday will be your last chance to check out a Peter Pan performance as well. Uh, karaoke at the Badlander Eagles and the Sunrise Saloon happening all weekend long as well. I'm just going to mow on through and go on to your Thursday events, but I am going to change cameras. Camera three. No, oh, this is camera two. <laughs> Thursday, you got a holiday book fair at Rattlesnake continuing on tomorrow as well. Blaze Dodgeball is back, so uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena is doing a dodgeball starting at 9 a.m. at um, – so tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., do some dodgeball. They're bringing back Blaze, um, the radio station, sponsors it. Missoula Indoor Sports Arena Roots and Mismo does their thing from 9.30 a.m. to about 12. So you get to do some – enjoy some – uh, basically, it's a giant padded uh, arena where you can do sorts, all sorts of wonderful things as well. There's also a new uh, trampoline uh, place uh, in the place of uh, Hastings. So it's it's kind of like Squirrel's Trampoline Place. The whole idea of it is that it's a whole entire uh, – 
you know, remember where Hastings was? Just on Brook Street. So if you're on Brook Street and you see this place and there's a squirrel, a picture of a squirrel on there. And basically the whole idea of it is that you're jumping on trampolines. The whole, I think the whole idea is that the whole area is one big trampoline and a trampoline um, place for all ages. So I think, I don't know if it's quite open yet, but it's, it's there. It's, it's going to be there someday. So uh, just, just, you know, just drive by it. Maybe you'll see, maybe something will happen. But uh, for right now, um, that's kind of what's, what, what replaced Hastings is a bunch of trampolines. Um, Community Coats is continuing on the Southgate Mall. You can check that out. Um, uh, donate to them as well. Ronald McDonald House is doing the Gingerbread House Contest dispra- Display, and it's happening uh, pretty much all the way until the 26th, so enjoy creative, locally made gingerbread houses by families and businesses. Visitors, visitors are even asked to vote for their favorite. <laughs> Oh, geez, sorry about that. Proceeds from the Gingerbread House <laughs> contest directly benefits the Ronald McDonald House of Missoula. And you can call them 541 7646 for more information. Again, that number is 541 7646 for more information about the Ronald McDonald House Gingerbread House contest. Um, birthday celebration Spectrum Discovery is turning 10 years old, and tomorrow from 3 to 5 p.m. at their Tool um, at the Tool location, uh, just off of Tool Street. You can enjoy their birthday celebration at Spectrum Discovery Center. Um, pretty much happening that day as well. Free admission all day at Spectrum Discovery Center, starting at 11 a.m. Rent to Palooza, University of Montana. If you're a college kid who's looking into transitioning from dorm life to renter's life, uh, it's, an, it's an, just another step up into uh, being on your own. Uh, you can come enjoy some fun games, renting information, appliances, fees, deposit, repairs, and other tenant rights that you guys can learn about at the University of Montana at 12 p.m. You can check it out. It's going to be all sorts of wonderful things. Um, I believe it's going to be in the University Center, so um, you can check that out as well. So another event that's happening Thursday is Anthropology, Anthropology and You, Missoula Insectarium is doing and encourage more people around the world to start considering insects as a viable, healthy, and tasty food source. Did you know that farming cric- cric- uh, crickets is far more sustainable than ranching cattle and even pr- uh, produces uh, higher amounts of protein per pound than it does? And you can join a fi- kid-friendly taste testing of cookies made with and without these crickets. So check it out. So the whole idea is they grind these crickets down to a flour and they use it to make cookies. So you won't even know <laughs> tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, Commuter Electronics in the Makerspace, Museum Public Library, they host a, a, a prethra. That's the word of the day is prethra of events happening at the Missoula Public Library. This one I'm just going to talk about. It's going to be Computer Electronics in the Makerspaces. Do you have... Um, Interest in a, a, Dori, a Durino uh, platform, if you know what that means, uh, then you would come in and try out these, this and other electronic platforms during the ele- computer electronics time from 3 to 6 p.m. And yeah, it's um, and also Zootown is doing a free silk screening demonstration at the Zootown Arts Community Center at 5:30 p.m. Want to jazz up the, the uh, jazz up a plain shirt, scarf, or tote bag? Bring it down to the Zach during their silk screen demonstration. Choose one of the designs and be one of the artists who will sil- silk screen it for you for free. So get some free silk screening and and you know some you know like artists come around um, from the city of Missoula, make their own kind of designs and you have the option of putting it on a shirt that you think is like, you know, that was my bad shirt, but now it's my good shirt. So that's happening at the free, <laughs> it's going to be a free silk screening demonstration. All you need to do is bring a shirt. Make sure you're not wearing the shirt when they p- press the uh, silk on your shirt. I'm sorry, I sprayed it and I didn't say it. Um, so that's kind of wrapping up all your events for Missoula uh, from the MissoulaEvents.net. If you want more information about that and more, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your local resources for everything Missoula um, in terms of just upcoming events. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just go to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, jazz is happening the plonk. Lowell Creek Band is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Um, Rocking Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse. And then you have... Uh, uh, Velashina Nights at the VFW. Oh, oh my God, I'm 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 totally just like butchering that name. Sorry about that. Chloe Gendro is gonna be at the Top Hat Round ra- Top Hat Lounge, and before I um uh, basically lose my ability to speak, if it hasn't already gone already, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, it is gonna be a great week. A lot of things are happening. My play is premiering. Um. 
pretty much this week, so I'll talk a little bit more about it this Friday. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and I hope you guys have a great week. Um, I'll see you guys Friday for Flagship Friday. Thank you.